Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast episode one. So what is this podcast going to be centered around? What is it all about? All that sort of stuff. I'll just very briefly go into it. Of course, it needs no explanation. It's going to be a reselling focused podcast, but it is also going to be a listen while you list style experience. So what that means is that there's not going to be any images other than the main image that you can see on the uh, screen now on the podcast or during the podcast. Um, so you don't need to check back on the screen. Uh, there won't be any other images on there. There won't be any videos or anything like that. So you can simply have this open in a, in a side tab while you are listing on eBay. Um, it's going to be centered around one topic each week and then I'm obviously going to go into a little bit of detail on that topic and also if people have questions centered around that topic um, then I will answer those at the end as well. So first off if you want to ask a question for next week how do you go about that? Well obviously there is the YouTube comments which is pretty obvious but also you can go over and message me personally on Instagram. There should be my handle on screen now. There's probably my handle in the, the YouTube description as well and also there's links on various different places on various different social medias and stuff so I'm sure you'll be able to find my Instagram pretty easily um, and you can go up there and message me your question for the following week um, so essentially the next topic is going to be comparison so comparing yourself to others um, so if you would like to drop any questions down below for that topic specifically uh, then you can do that now and as I say you could go over to Instagram if you prefer that method um, so yeah comparison is going to be next week's but this week is going to be work structure now I was on the seller lads live podcast on uh, not podcast seller lads live show um, on Monday this week which was the 17th of June and I mentioned it was all about uh, George Ross was hosting it and it was all about uh, weaknesses and how to improve on your weaknesses and things like that and I I identified one of my weaknesses I've identified it for quite a while actually now uh, of conscientiousness so my ability to do my work well so obviously if conscientiousness is a weakness I don't necessarily have an ability to do my work well or maybe to uh, as high a standard uh, as other people who may be very good at um, being conscientious around their work so essentially I wanted to talk a little bit about work structure. I wanted to talk about a little bit about daily routine, things like that, because all this comes into conscientiousness and uh, obviously it helps improve your your ability to do your work well. So, of course, I'm just going to go into a, f a few points on my day. I'm going to go into a few bits of, uh, I suppose, experiential evidence or experience that I've had um, in which has led me to certain conclusions. And also, I'm just going to give a little bit of general advice that I feel uh, might help certain people out as well. So, first off on this podcast, I'm going to go into a brief discussion of my day. So, my days are very... Um, They've been very unstructured. They've been very structured. Uh, I think like a lot of us, uh, we tend to get into routines and then we leave the routines and then we start new routines and then we leave those and, and maybe certain periods in our life or certain weeks or months um aren't as good or aren't as structured this may be due to personal circumstances uh, or, or whatever it may be or it might just be to, to do with the fact that we're not necessarily pushing ourselves to the extent we might want to. And of course, it's always good to have time off. It's always good to um, essentially have a little bit of a break. But if that's bleeding into a very long period of time that's quite unstructured and quite unfocused, then we do need to push ourselves back into that a little bit. Um, so essentially, the kind of day or the style of day that I've adopted uh, for the last few weeks actually the last three weeks and I did adopt kind of this style of day um, a few months ago as well and I actually had about a month or two month uh, period where I was very very productive very highly productive and it was on this style of day and as I say I've had a break from it I sort of uh, my sleep routine got a little bit distorted and uh, that actually impacted me quite negatively and I wasn't as productive but now I'm back on this kind of uh, work routine 
I am much more productive again. And it does center massively around my sleep routine. So I do want to state first off, now a lot of this may sound like this Gary V mentality or this, uh, what's the other guy's name, Tony, Tony Robbins and all that sort of stuff. And while while I do have good words to say about those people, that isn't the mentality or that isn't the um, ideology, I suppose you could call it, that I necessarily gravitate to or that I go down. Now, my structure and some of the things I do are in line with what they say. However, I have a more naturalistic viewpoint on the world. Um, I feel they have more of a mechanical viewpoint on the world. So, where my sleep structure is structured around uh, Chinese philosophy, and I won't get into that too much because this is that would be obviously a um, topic for my philosophy channel. Um, but my structure, my sleep structure, is centered around Taoism, Taoist philosophy, things like that, which is a much more naturalistic viewpoint of the world and the universe, opposed to just this mechanical viewpoint in which uh, I feel Gary Vee and Tony Robbins and other people adopt, which is just this idea of you've got to push yourself to the limit and it's always this battle and it's always this fight and you've got to force things. Um, I, I went down that mentality for quite a while, but it just didn't suit me. However, with this new sort of naturalistic philosophy, um, it's essentially getting to the same end it's it's getting to the same end goal but it's a lot kinder to yourself you've been a lot kinder to yourself so for example i get up at between five and seven because that is naturally when uh, essentially the yin energy in taoism is coming into the yang energy which is the dark energy is coming into the light energy and essentially there are also bodily functions that are going on at those times that naturally help you get up and when you see it from that more naturalistic viewpoint it's a lot easier, or it is for me, to to actually get up and to get into the day. Whereas when I was saying to myself, oh, well, I've just got to get up at 5 a.m. every day just because I need to push myself, that's a little bit harder on yourself. So although you're getting to the same end or the same end goal, you're being a lot kinder to yourself in the way you're marketing it to you. Um, and I think that's very important. So I go to bed, so we'll, we'll get into the actual uh, meat of the, uh, the day now. So I get in, uh, get, uh, go to sleep around 10 to half 10 at night. Um, and then I get up anywhere between five and seven. Today it was 5.45. Other days it's been 10 to seven. You know, it, 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 I can't give you a, a set time. It's anywhere between five and seven. And it always worked a treat for me to get up in that realm. And whenever I get up in that sort of realm, I don't feel that lethargic. I don't feel really, really tired or anything like that. I find it quite easy to get up these days. Of course, the first couple of days, it was a little bit hard to get up. But, I mean, I've done that before. I have got up early before, so it's not terribly, terribly hard. Um, but now it's so much better. Um, obviously, I don't really feel that that tired when I get up. It's just quite natural now. Um, but it really does feel as if it's a nice natural time to get up for me. Of course, if you guys want to get up at eight, if you guys want to get up at nine, if you guys want to get up at seven, whatever the time is, it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying that between five and seven, uh, you have to get up uh, and anyone's superior for getting up between five and seven. It's not like that. Um, I know that a lot of people, uh, such as Gary Vee and, and other people, preach it as if, uh, preach getting up early as if you've got to do it and if you've got to, uh, and, and you've got to be superior in this way. Well, it's simply not the case. You don't have to. It's just about what works for you. And that's what I find works for me. So I still get a good probably eight hours, something like that sleep. So I'm not uh, losing out on any sleep and I would never try and do that. Um, but I am getting up nice and early and it feels quite refreshing for me. So obviously you've got to apply this to your own life in that sort of way. You've got to think to yourself, well, do I want to get up at... Um, eight o'clock and then what time would I would I want to go to bed that would feel natural for me getting up at eight o'clock because that's got to be the the focus really what is natural for you in your cycle and I know I'm spending quite a lot of time on sleep here but I think it is very very important for um 
a, a well energized day essentially because if you if you've not got a very good sleep routine or a sleep pattern because i know this because I've, I've i've messed about and chopped and changed with my sleep pattern so many times but if you've not got that then it can really really affect you especially i find around two or three o'clock in the afternoon it can start to get you a little bit maybe a little bit later maybe four o'clock but around that sort of time so next what I do uh, and what I've been doing for the last few weeks is I package up my parcels and I put some music on. Um, I've tried it without music. I've tried it with music. Sometimes I actually quite like packaging without music. Um, other times I I really feel as if I need music. It motivates me. Um, so I package with my speakers on. I have a little, um, what do we call it? I'm not quite sure what you call it. A little remote speaker type thing, one of those little pods, pod speaker type thing, um, so obviously, uh, that's what I do, uh, around seven, eight, nine o'clock, something like that, seven, seven to eight normally, um, but I really do find, and again, this is just what works for you, maybe packaging up that early in the morning might not work for you, but I really do find that if I package straight away, after I've got up, I feel a lot more motivated to do it, opposed to if I have to do it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it may be. So that seems to work quite nicely for me, and I'm actually enjoying my packaging a lot more. I have quite often said that I'm not brilliant with packaging. I don't like packaging. I get bored of it and all the rest of it because I've packaged a lot of parcels at this point, and I know that a lot of other people... Uh, are similar to me in the fact that they don't like packaging necessarily so I would say to people if you are like me and you don't like packaging then maybe doing it in the morning after you get up it doesn't really matter what time you get up but just doing it after you get up um is might might, might work for you as well and obviously listening to music or something like that might help you uh, along the same lines but to be honest as I mentioned I still quite quite like and quite uh, find it quite enjoying to uh, package up without music and just in silence and I can do that quite nicely and uh, it just it really just depends on my mood sometimes I like music sometimes I don't but then what I normally do is do some photography or sorting unless I'm going out anywhere in the day so if I'm going out somewhere then I won't do photography or sorting at, uh, sorting at this time but I'll do photography sorting after breakfast um, and then, obviously, this is all in, encapsulated in the morning. I might record a video, or if I'm doing a vlog throughout the day, then I will just do the vlog throughout the day. Uh, and then, with regards to listing, I do all my listing. Uh, well, I do the majority of my listing on the PC. I have been doing re more recently a little bit on the phone, um, but I generally just fit it in where I can. I do try and do a, a solid listing session if I can, and usually what, when that happens is around 2 or 3 o'clock um, if I'm doing that. But sometimes I will just list throughout the day when I can fit it in. If I've got certain things happening, maybe I've got something uh, socially that I need to go out for. Maybe, as I say, I'm going out somewhere else in the day. So I'll just fit it in where I can. Um, and then, obviously, towards the end of the day, I really relish and I find a lot of enjoyment in doing editing and obviously getting my daily walks in. I do quite a few daily walks. I find it very, very uh, therapeutic I've always loved walking massively um, and I would say that if anyone's feeling a little bit isolated inside the house um, because obviously I mean this is a topic we can touch upon in later podcasts actually uh, the idea of lonely loneliness and reselling depression and reselling all the rest of it I won't touch on that too much but I do, I do just want to say if Obviously, if you're feeling a little bit isolated in the house, maybe your partner is working. Uh, I don't know what your situation is, so I'm just sort of creating some sort of fictitious situation here. But let's say your partner is working a nine to five job and you're in the house alone all day. Obviously, it's a brilliant thing that we've got at the moment with uh, content creators on YouTube who are putting out plenty of live shows, plenty of videos um, to obviously keep people a little bit um, away from that isolation and loneliness. But if you are feeling that a little bit, sometimes what's nice is just getting out and about in the fresh air and just going on a nice little walk. And obviously it does boost your mood. I'm pretty sure there's 
numerous scientific studies done on the fact that walking and exercise really do positively impact your, uh, your mood, uh, positively impact yourself. So uh, yeah, definitely just maybe try and get out for a walk. Or if that's not your thing, maybe think about doing something else. Maybe uh, maybe it's not necessarily exercise, it's completely your thing, but maybe try and set up a few little social meetings, uh, maybe one, once or twice a week. I know it is taking time away from your reselling, but it is a must for a healthy body and mind. So I would say definitely uh, do that if you can. And then also what I do, again, actually just leading on from that, is I see my friend, uh, I see a friend who lives literally just around the corner. I also have a couple of other friends I see um, on a semi-regular basis, once every couple of weeks, something like that. And of course, uh, mainly I do, I speak to a lot of people online. I am trying to increase the ratio of actually in real life friends I suppose you would call them to online friends because I have a lot of resellers that I that I'm friends with online I talk to you fairly regularly um but of course I, I can't see them in person because they're at opposite ends of the country and all the rest of it uh, and, and that's fine and I, I, I appreciate their friendship online but also uh, we all do need some uh, real life friends, some people there that we can actually go and visit. So I am trying to improve that ratio and get a few more friends that are actually that I can actually visit uh, quite regularly or meet up with quite regularly actually in the real world. Uh, not that online isn't the real world, but you kind of get my point with that, I'm sure. So yeah, once every two or three days, I go around and see him in the afternoon, normally for a couple of hours, and it's just nice to have a chat with someone. Um, I do see him quite regularly, so we don't really have all that much to catch up on, but we've been friends for, must be getting on 20 years now, so, you know, so when I was three or four, I think maybe four or five we met, so, um, you know, we, we're very comfortable around each other, and it's, it's, uh, it's just nice to see him and catch up with him, even if we haven't got tons to talk about or anything like that so that's essentially my day obviously there's a little bit more to it than that there's, you know uh, there's things here and there that I won't have covered but I just wanted to give you a brief outline of it and of course I do ne normally work up to about seven or eight o'clock in the evening so I get up at half six seven o'clock now it's also um it's also important to know I suppose that I don't work consistently, so don't think that I'm some sort of god or anything like that that is getting up at half six and he's doing work all day till seven or eight o'clock. I'm not, I, I'm not like, I don't do 14 hours of solid work and I don't think that would be very healthy. Uh, what I do is I have breaks throughout the day and I've mentioned this so many times. So I have little breaks watching YouTube. I have little breaks, as I say, if I'm seeing my friend uh, and maybe even that's quite a big break actually of one or two hours. So it probably ends up being that I've worked about nine hours, maybe 10 hours, something like that in the day. I would say probably not less than nine hours because if I'm being really honest with myself, even like the little things that I don't consider work, like editing, I don't really consider work because I enjoy it so much, but it is work. Um, and doing things like Photoshop and doing thumbnails and all the rest of it. And even some, in some cases, doing my packaging and my listing, I uh, quite a lot. Of, I mean, listing is a bit more of a chore for me, but packaging, I actually really enjoy and it doesn't feel quite like work. So, um, you know, I, I do want to be honest, I do do a lot of work um, and I'm, I'm trying to be honest with myself in a positive light. I do like the fact to do a lot of work, but at the same time, I do have breaks and it would even be uh, considerable for me to actually have a few more breaks, really. I could do with having a few more breaks. Now, I've currently set up a system just to finish off on my kind of daily routine Um I've currently set up a system over the last few weeks, which some of you may be pleased to hear because I know a lot of people have, or quite a few people have said, you know, in the past when I've said how much I work and all the rest of it, they've said maybe you need to take weekends off or maybe you need to do something uh, once a week or whatever where you just don't work. Well, I've set up a uh, system now where I'm listing Monday to Friday and then the weekend I'm trying to be a little bit more social. So what's happening is I'm doing all my listing, I'm doing all all what I've just mentioned in that work structure through Monday to Friday. 
And on Fridays, I do have a little bit of a laissez-faire day. Uh, laissez-faire, I think it just means let it be in French. We used to learn it in, in business studies. Uh, it basically, it's a motivation technique where essentially the, your boss, or even if you're your own boss, you're a little bit fairer with yourself or a little bit less harsh, a little bit more relaxed on one of the days. Um, and I just have chosen Friday for that. So that's something you can maybe adopt, having a little bit more of a laissez-faire attitude on a Friday. And essentially on a Friday, I'll do a few less listings. I will go around and see my friend. My grandma comes around to see me on a Friday as well, which is really nice to see her um, because I do uh, really treasure the time I get to see with my grandparents now, especially because they're getting older and older. And uh, I really just want to spend as much time with them as I can at this point. Um, and yeah, so... It's, I have that sort of slightly uh, more adopted laissez-faire attitude on a Friday. But then come Saturday and Sunday, I am still doing work and I'm never really going to break that habit. But I don't do any listing and I don't do any photography. Um, I do do my packaging on a Sunday because I like to get it done on a Sunday opposed to a Monday. So I do it in a Sunday afternoon and then I can just package up str uh, str stragglers. I can't even say that. Stragglers. There we go. Stragglers on a Monday um, from overnight and stuff. But um, essentially, uh, I do do that. But then on the Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing very minimal work. I'm doing a little bit of editing. I might record a video or a vlog or something like that. But that's about it. And recording a vlog isn't too bad because I'm just doing very little bits and bobs of recording here and there. It's not too much like work. Um, so yeah, that's essentially my day. I've just got a few more points to cover on this topic. And then I think we may as well wrap this first podcast up here. Hopefully we'll, we'll sit in around maybe 35, 40 minutes for this one. And maybe the next one might be a little bit longer. As I say, if we've got any questions on the topic, which as I will, I'll mention again, the topic is comparison next week, comparing your yourself to others so if you have any comments questions or queries on that topic please do drop them down below in the video description for next week or feel free to message me over on instagram so first off i wanted to touch on this very quickly so having a creative project on the side for motivation so that's what I wrote down here. So of course, many of you will know that I have a philosophy channel now. I read quite a lot um, and I really do enjoy um, having some sort of level of intellectual stimulation aside from my reselling. And I could touch upon for a very, very long time, actually, uh, touch upon is probably the wrong word, but I could actually elaborate um, quite a lot, actually, on um, my need for an intellectual side hobby or whatever you want to call it because I'm the type of person who despite for many reasons not liking academia or the education system in, in a lot of respects um, I really enjoy and really do need uh, sort of like an intellectual or an academic uh, just sort of something on the side essentially something creative something intellectual whatever on the side and uh, despite resell reselling in some circumstances, it can be a little bit intellectual, it can be a little bit challenging, um, it's not quite enough for me personally, and uh, for a long time I was, you know, I was thinking, oh yeah, I love reselling and I'll, I'll do it forever, and it's the only thing I'm going to do, um, and I will, and I, I always say this, I will do reselling in some form for my entire life, I have no doubt in that, I, 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 it, when I think about quitting eBay, oh my god, I just can't think about it because it's so horrendous to me, the idea of doing that. Um, but I will def I have definitely analysed in myself this, uh, this need for some sort of intellectual side hobby. So, yeah, essentially I have a philosophy channel, I'm doing that, that's kind of my creative or my intellectual, oh, what do we call it, outlet, that's it. So my intellectual outlet... And then I'm finding that that's actually having that intellectual outlet or that creative outlet or whatever you want to call it is giving me more motivation for my reselling. So um, I would suggest if you are someone who you might not necessarily be someone who needs a creative or intellectual out, uh, outlet, because, of course, we all we're all kind of wired differently. Someone might not be, um, for example, I'm high in the big five personality trait openness, which 
goes hand in hand with connecting abstract ideas and being creative and being unconventional and being different and all the rest of it. Someone who is a little bit lower in openness might not need a creative outlet, might not need a, an intellectual outlet even. They might be more than happy just getting on and doing what they're doing with their resign and that is completely perfect um, if you're obviously happy with that. So, you know, everyone might not need this creative project or intellectual outlet, but I would say maybe consider it because it, it is helping me out. Now, next point I wanted to come to is don't give yourself too much structure um, as this may get boring or it may get repetitive. So I've tried all sorts of structure. I've tried Google calendars. I've tried uh, to-do lists. Now, to-do lists work pretty well for me, actually, because I can do them on... Uh, you know, I can do them every day and it can be different every day or it can be sl there can be a slight variation um, on the to-do list. So it, it makes it seem a little bit different, even if it's not quite that different. Um, but I've tried all sorts of things. I've tried just having no structure and just doing it in my mind, which didn't really work that well. Um, what else have I tried? I think I've done... Uh, tried doing notes and stuff like that. I've not tried bullet journaling, but it's very similar to... to it's basically... <sighs> I know that this might annoy a few people, but in my eyes, it's kind of just a glorified to-do list. Um, and yeah, I get it's... I mean, to be honest, it could be a creative outlet for you. So if that's a creative outlet for you, then brilliant, because I know there's a lot of people who do the bullet journals and actually really get into the, the artwork of them and the creative side of them. And that's brilliant if you want to do that for a creative outlet. But for me, um, I'm not necessarily artistic. I may be creative, but I'm creative in the sense of... Uh, intellectual creativity or creativity in words so I think that I could be I could do poetry and things like that and I could do um, what else like create uh, connecting abstract ideas like I said um, you know bringing things together from different areas uh, you know different religions and different philosophies and things like that that's why I like philosophy and psychology bringing different things uh, together within psychology and actually being able to assess what they mean in the context of a whole um, but I'm not necessarily artistic so that's why I don't think the bullet journaling uh, appeals to me so much but essentially I have done loads of different styles of structure and it can get a little bit boring so what I would suggest is just finding some sort of structure and then not not taking it to the nth degree. So not taking it to the extreme as in planning out your days hour by hour. Because trust me, I've done that. And it, it literally it turns me off within the first few days. I, I can't do it. I don't think anyone likes to know exactly what they're doing hour by hour for weeks and weeks and weeks upon end. Because especially it might be okay if you're doing different things every day like if you're someone who's traveling the world then you could plan it out hour by hour and it wouldn't get boring because you're traveling the world or you're you're doing different things or you're doing motivational speaking across various different countries or whatever but if you're someone who's just got a fairly repetitive day that kind of just manifests itself every day in a similar way then maybe you don't want to kind of structure that hour by hour because it's just going to make it seem really, really boring and repetitive. So try and throw a few different things in there. You know, maybe, again, this comes back to being social or doing different social activities just to mix it up a little bit as well. But I would say don't give yourself too much structure if you can because it will just get boring. So next is... Um, so I wanted to do a brief chat on taking time off and I know I've covered this a little bit so I feel it is important to take time off but the problem is every time I take an extended period of time off I lose a lot of motivation and I can't get back into the work and I don't know whether this is the same for anyone else out there maybe you could drop a, drop a comment down below um, if it is and obviously we can have a chat about it but um, yeah essentially I don't mind doing this kind of taking Saturday and Sunday off or pretty much having them off. Uh, and that seems to be working quite well for me, actually. And I think that I could actually slowly integrate having Saturday and Sundays off completely with no work. I think I can actually do that um, at some point down the line, especially if I have a few more uh, social events and things like that to do. Uh, I think that would be no trouble. But whenever I've tried to take extended periods of time off uh, it really impacts my motivation so I suppose what you've got to identify is whether 
you're the type of person who needs extended periods of time off uh, and they actually motivate you and help you with your work or whether you identify yourself as maybe a little bit of a workaholic or whatever and uh, you just simply cannot take extended periods of time off and I know some people will be saying well maybe that's something you need to work on breaking maybe you need to um, just stop working and go 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 cold turkey and stuff from it but I think that that's going against your natural tendency because I really do feel some people actually have the natural tendency to work and other people have the natural tendency to be lazy. So, you know, if you're a person who has a natural tendency to work, then being lazy is just going against that. So, yes, okay, take time off and and as much as you can, as much as you feel happy with doing and as much as it uh, won't completely demotivate you from your work when you get back into it but don't necessarily have these really really long extended periods of time off because it's not necessarily gonna gonna help matters and it's gonna go against your natural flow your natural naturally the way you are so obviously I wouldn't necessarily class myself as a workaholic only because I know there's a lot of other people out there who work a lot harder than me and I feel like I would be doing a disjustice to them if I were to say I'm a workaholic um but so I mean that, that might be a that, that might be a natural uh excuse of a workaholic I don't know actually it could be it's quite funny but um yeah so just identify how you are with holidays just identify how you are with time off and how it impacts you and if you are the type of person who can have an extended break then go for it do it and i'm sure that'll motivate you massively when you come back if you're the type of person like me where it actually just makes you uptight and clingy uh, not clingy but uptight and just frustrated and stuff and and the holiday doesn't or the break doesn't really do you that much good then um obviously maybe just stick to having short uh short breaks now that's not to say you shouldn't go on long holidays or anything i mean i think that everyone should at least try doing that and stuff like that but uh maybe what would work better for someone who is a bit more of a workaholic is just breaking it in so just going for a three-day holiday or a four-day holiday or even a two-day holiday just get a little bit little bit of a break and then maybe when you've done that enough times you might be able to feel like you can go on a seven-day holiday or a 14-day holiday without then losing all your motivation when you come back you know it, it just depends but uh, certainly I think I've identified the fact that with me it's probably best just for me to if I'm doing holidays is just to do a you know if I'm going away or whatever just to do a two or three day break and, and that's that and if I want to go away for longer then I will do it at some point but I just love my work so much that I find it so hard to to break away from it really and I know that so many people uh, listening to this podcast will will probably identify with that so that's a little I say a brief chat on that but it's a little bit of a long chat on that um and then also I've put down here always remember to do what works for you obviously I think I mentioned at the start with the sleep routine and I said about obviously getting up when it suits you uh, just because I'm getting up at x time it doesn't mean that anyone else has to do that it doesn't mean that that's a must or anything like that just get up when you feel you want to get up get go to bed when you feel you want to go to bed if you feel like you want to work at night time and then sleep during part of the day if that works for you better then do that I know there's a few people who do that um, just do what works for you don't try and replicate someone just for the sake of replicating them and obviously we'll touch upon that in the next episode which will be comparison so I won't touch upon that too much now but yeah just do what works for you not just in your sleep routine but in your entire business do what works for you don't sell something because someone else is selling something don't do anything because other people are doing it just simply do it because uh, it works for you and you like it and you enjoy it and that's something as well obviously extending on that do it because you enjoy it don't do it for any other reason and it's the same I know obviously a lot of people need money a lot of people uh, you know feel maybe we don't have much money these days and stuff like that and obviously we could go into the cost of living and we could go into all this in in quite a lot of depth if I had done a bit more research into it but you know we could we could even talk abstractly about it but I don't want to necessarily go into too much detail with that but you know money yes okay people need it but if you're gonna live a life where you're dis- depriving yourself of enjoyment 
for the sake of a few extra pound each month or even quite a few pound extra each month, to me, that's not worth it. I would rather live a life that is uh, deprived of, you know, a little bit of materi uh, materialism or a few materialistic items or possessions. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather live a life deprived of those but being happy in my work um, than, than living a life having an abundance of material possessions but doing something I really do, uh, you know, I really don't have an interest for, I really... Uh, kind of have a little bit of a frustration or anger when I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, I would I would just do what you enjoy, and if you do it well enough, the money's gonna end up eventually manifesting itself anyway. But you have got to put, you know, you really have got to put the work in. It's not something that's the money's not just gonna come straight away. But if you really enjoy it, the money will come eventually. Um, and and that's really what I want to say to people I want to say do things because you enjoy them don't do them because um you know the money's turning your head or anything like that and I've been in situations where I thought to myself oh I might do this because I want more money or I might do this because um you know it'll be financially better all the rest of it but I think that it's important just to so at some points leave that where it needs to be and focus on the enjoyment as well and as people come into later life what I've seen when I've uh, talked to people and, and seen people when they're coming into 40s mid 40s 50s they seem to really have a sense of perspective with this and they really value what they enjoy um, apart from doing something you know instead of doing something that they don't enjoy they value the thing that they enjoy a lot more than just getting the money um, and it seems that they then in, they do that thing whatever it may be it may be a hobby it may be a job whatever but they do that thing with a lot more vigor and they do that thing with a lot more passion so um i kind of look at people who are middle aged or even older um and i think to myself right well they they have obviously got double the life experience of me or maybe even triple and clearly something's working for them because they're happy they're content etc and then I look at the certain things they're doing as I say and it is mainly focused around this enjoyment and also coming back to the the topic as well on, on this conscientiousness that I'm kind of lacking in also you find that people who are middle-aged or older are a lot more conscientious that may be to do with life experience it probably is um but also whatever they're doing whatever they do they seem to um bring to it a marvelous amount of conscientiousness i'll give you an example of this so my friend's uh, dad who does gardening he's been doing gardening grow, growing fruit and and veg for years now probably 10 years maybe longer um i don't know really but i'm that's just how long i've remembered him doing it for it probably might, might even be longer than that but he does uh tomatoes and he does strawberries and he does loads of different things and he always ties them up nicely. He always puts cloth over them so that then insects can't necessarily start eating them up and stuff or the birds can't get the strawberries. He always makes sure he's watering them nicely. And every year, sort of this time or a little bit later actually in the year, um, he gets a lovely bumper crop of whatever he's producing. And it's because he's well aware now, obviously with the years of experience, he's, he's now 65, and uh, he's well aware now that, of course, that's how you get things done. You know, you need to essentially uh, plant the things, look after the things, make sure um, you're doing all you can to, to yield something good, and then something good will come. So, you know, looking at older people, looking at uh, even just middle-aged people can really get a better perspective of where you want to be or where where you feel you 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 ought to be in one respect but it's not necessarily feel where you ought to be it is feel where I feel I want to be at that you know I want to be there um and so I'm taking that on board now in the hope that when I'm 40 or 50 or 60 I'll be like really really good with it all because I've been consciously aware of it even at the time of 23 so therefore i'm a little bit ahead of the game kind of thing with that um and then obviously i can be a better person 
uh, for myself, for my family, for what, whatever it is at the time, uh, when I am that age, and I can be proud of that, and that's quite, uh, it's quite nice, you know, to feel like that, so, yeah, that being said, we'll move on for that, and then finally, I've just got this one more point wrote down, uh, we're on 39 minutes now, so I will wrap this up in a second, don't worry about not getting uh, loads done on one day, uh, what I do is I roll it on to the next day, so, yeah, this is something that I wanted to touch upon, I will touch upon this for a few minutes, actually, because it's interesting, so, a lot of people have this, uh, thing of, they do the to-do list, they do whatever they're gonna do to structure the day, and then half of the day rolls around, or maybe full day rolls around, and they're not happy, because they've not got, done what they wanted to get done, right, uh, or they've not got as much done as they wanted to get done, so, in this case, I think it's important to just don't worry about it too much. I have had so many days, so many days, like a crazy amount of days, you wouldn't believe, where I've not got much done uh, in the context of my own, uh, what I wanted to, to achieve in my own mind, essentially. Uh, and, you know, you look at this channel, I'm still producing videos on this channel, I'm still doing plenty of work on this channel, I'm still doing listing on eBay, uh, this week actually is going pretty well for listing, um, you know, I'm still doing all that I'm doing, I'm still happy in all that I'm doing, so you've got to take it from, what I suppose what I'm trying to say is you've got to take it from that bigger perspective, um, which loads of people talk about, you know, just looking at the the longer term rather than the short term, uh, and I know this is something that Gary V touches on actually, like I said at the start, I'm not entirely opposed to what they talk about, I just feel that sometimes they talk about it in a little bit of a um, authoritarian way, you know, and I suppose that I like to talk about it in a little bit of a a more kinder way to people, I don't like it to be so authoritarian, um, but no, you know, looking longer term, having that perspective, and essentially, don't worry, if it get what, for, for example, what I do, is if it gets to eight o'clock, something like that, half seven, eight o'clock, and I've not got everything done, I don't try, I mean, I used to do, but I don't try anymore to think, right, well, I'll, I'll, spend another hour on it and stuff and, and get things done, uh, maybe with the exception of a, a, an odd few days where I'm editing something and I'm getting really frustrated and I need to, I, I really feel like I want to edit this video and uh, I might end up doing another half an hour or an hour on it, um, but with uh, those being exceptions, so yeah, essentially what I do is 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock comes around, something like that, and then I am done, and it all gets rolled over to the next day, prime example of this was yesterday, um, I did 8 listings or something yesterday, I was aiming for 10, I had loads of other things to do yesterday, I had social event, I had, I went to town sourcing, I did my packaging, did my labelling, I did a vlog, I did some editing for a bit, it was a quite a hectic day yesterday, but I didn't get the extra 2 listings done that I wanted to get done, and I didn't get any photography done for today's listings, um, but I thought to myself, right, well, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna leave it at the door, and that's that, and uh, we'll pick it back up tomorrow, and it'll be fine, today rolls around, I've got nine listings done already, we're on 9.53 in the morning now, and hopefully, you know, I've got photos of I don't know, maybe another 13 items or something, so hopefully I'll get over 20 listings done today, so you see what I mean, that perspective, so yesterday, oh, I didn't quite get as much done as I thought, today, suddenly, I'm in a better position, but how, you know, how does that work, it's very odd how it works, but, um, you, you know, don't, so don't worry about it, because the next day might roll around, or a few days later, or even maybe it might take a few weeks later, um, but then it'll, it'll come back around again, you know, and it'll be, uh, you'll feel, oh, actually, I'm a bit ahead of myself now, and I'm feeling quite good for, for doing that, so don't worry too much about not getting loads done, and just roll it on to the next day, and that's always going to be how it is, just think about it in these terms, if you get loads done one day, um, then you're still going to have more to do the next day anyway, it's this never-ending stream of work uh, that can keep coming and keep coming and keep coming, you've got an, an, well I say an infinite amount, it's not quite an infinite amount, but it's a lot, it's a, an abundance of stock out there that you can source, you've got, therefore if there's an abundance of stock out there for you to source, you've got an abundance of stuff that you can be listing, 
if you've got an abundance of stuff that you can be listing, the chances are you've got quite a lot selling. If you've got quite a lot selling, you've got quite a lot to package. So you see, it's just this... There's, an, there's like this incredible amount of work. I'm not going to say infinite, but there's this incredible, as much as I want to, but there's this incredible amount of work that you can do. And it's just going to roll around anyway. So whether you get little done or a lot done, a lot of work is always going to be there for you the next day or the day after. So don't think about, you know, don't necessarily worry about that too much, but just think that, I've got work to be doing anyway, so whatever I get done today is fine, and then I'll do whatever I get done the next day, and that's going to be fine as well, and then whatever I get done the next day, that's going to be fine, because there's always going to be a mountain of work there, um, it's just essentially trying to focus on the day at hand, trying to focus on what you're doing at hand, and... Um, essentially taking pride in that, being conscientious, being happy and enjoying what you're doing in, in that kind of, uh, you know, that day or that activity or that moment or whatever it may be. And, uh, and then just living for that really. And then getting on to the next day and doing what you can there. So anyway, I think we'll end it there for this one. It's just gone over the 45 minute mark. So as I mentioned, just very quickly again, um, next week's episode, episode two, will be centered around comparison and comparing yourself to others. So again, I will say it, please do drop any questions down below that you may have for the next episode. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, then obviously I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you've got any suggestions for topics, anything like that, then please do drop them down below. Or as I say, you can message me personally over on Instagram. I am very quick at getting back to people on Instagram and I do just love connecting with people. So if you are uh, on Instagram, then please don't hesitate to send me a message and uh, hopefully, yeah, we can have a chat about whatever it may be. And also, uh, you can tell me your suggestion or or your uh, question or whatever it may be. So, yeah, with that being said, thank you very much for joining me on today's podcast. And, uh, yeah, I will see you in episode two. So I'll see you very soon, guys.